In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about exporting captions and closed captioning data from Adobe Captivate 8. So, I have uh, one of my project files open, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to export all of the text that you see here on the screen, but also all of the text that's actually in my closed captioning. And let's get this process started, and while we're waiting for it to do its thing, I'll explain some of the reasons why you would do this. This is actually a particularly slow process because, of course, with a typical course of, let's say, like this one, this has nearly a hundred slides. Uh, you, of course, are going to have a great deal of information to, uh, to export. So, to export a file, or sorry, to export all of this content, you're going to need to um, click on the File drop-down menu and then go to the export let's do that again file drop down menu and then we'll go to the export option and underneath that you'll see a whole bunch of options for you and what we're looking for is project captions and closed captions so i'm going to get that process started simply uh, give it a name it's going to use the name of the course and it's actually saving it as a Word document. I'm just going to save it to my desktop, but you could save it to, um, you know, a shared drive or something like that. I'd, I'd recommend sh saving it locally first. Don't try to save it over a network. Uh, this is, again, a very uh, lengthy process. So if there's any interruption in network connectivity, uh, it could cause problems for the file. So let's hit Save. And uh, in this case, I'm replacing an old version of that same document. So let's talk uh, briefly about um, a number of reasons why you would do this. Now, in my case, uh, I live in a country that has more than one official language. Uh, here in Canada, we speak not only English, uh, but we also speak French. And it's fairly regional. But um, there are two official languages, and you know if your if your employee base is uh, representative of of these different regions, um, you would want to of course uh, prepare a translated version of your e-learning course. Uh, another example uh, similar to Canada could be the United States. There's a very large Spanish-speaking population. And in certain parts of the United States, Spanish is spoken more than English is. So you, you'd want to, of course, make sure that that was uh, what that translation was available to that particular audience. Another reason you might want to export your project captions and closed captioning is from an editing perspective. Although Adobe Captivate certainly has um, a fairly sophisticated search and replace functionality as well as a spell check functionality, some people are just more comfortable in Microsoft Word. And there may be certain advantages to exporting all of the content of your course into Microsoft Word, you know, and, and simply check for your spelling and grammar. I've actually sometimes used it to ensure that all of my fonts are consistent across the entire course. Uh, for example, early in my career, I had prepared a course, and, and unbeknownst to me, um, there were a few um, examples of where I was using a different font. Perhaps I copied it from a uh, one document and pasted it into Adobe Captivate. But the end result was is that um, there were some cases where I was using uh, not the corporately approved font, but rather uh, I think it was Arial uh, or Times New Roman or something like that. So exporting all of your text into a single document would allow you to actually highlight all the text and make sure you're using just the one single font. I've also do this, done this before to, uh, to make sure that the font sizes and colors are uh, are aligned with one another as well. The other thing you might want to do is you may want to provide a text-only version of your course in addition to the course itself uh, to people who are reviewing the course. And that way if they spot anything like maybe something that's 
uh, not said correctly or a reference to something that might be inappropriate, they can actually highlight it in the document itself. Um, I'm going to actually fast forward at this point. As I've indicated, this is a very long process and I could be sitting here for quite some time. Uh, I really have no other explanations as to why you would want to do this, but I've given you a few examples to think of. So I'm just going to stop talking at this point and allow this process to complete on its own. And then we'll catch up once it's back uh, finished exporting. Okay, so the captions were successfully exported into Microsoft Word. And of course, Adobe Captivate is asking me if I would like to view this document. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. And that just takes a moment to load in your copy of Word, in this case, Word 2013. Now, when I design e-learning courses, I use a lot of smart objects with fairly darker colors and quite often use white text for those smart objects. And you can see some examples of that right here. There's actually white text in these columns. So how do I view that? Well, in Microsoft Word, just go to the Design tab, and then you'll see in Page Background over here on the right-hand side of your page, Page Color. And we're just going to make the page color something other than the plain white. This is OK, because this will not affect you uh, when you import this file back into Captivate, whereas changing, of course, the text color would uh, obviously change the text color in your Captivate project as well. So I'm just going to make that blue, and now I can see all of the text that's from this course. Now this course has a whole bunch of content, and it has uh, a quiz at the end in the form of several question pools, and also in addition to the narration, which incidentally, the actual text-to-speech narration isn't in this file. But what is in this file is all the closed captioning associated with that. So once you have the closed captioning translated, you can copy and paste that into your actual text-to-speech stuff as well. So you would then, of course, run the text-to-speech agent and then, of course, get the uh, alternate language files, uh, the audio files set up as well. Well, let's take a look at this. Pretty straightforward here. You basically have, um, there's a bunch of object item codes here. It's important not to edit any of this. Uh, your original text is set up in a column here for comparison purposes. And here's the text that you're going to edit. This is anything you change needs to happen in these in this column here. And the final column includes information about the page where this came from. So in this case, this is slide number two and so on. When you're uh, sharing this file with other users, uh, it's important that they do not mess with the caption, or sorry, the column titles. So they should not change this. Do not translate this to another language. Keep it in English, regardless of what's underneath it. It should always say updated text caption data. So if I scroll down, you can see I've got page two, page three, page four, five, six, all this information. Some of these um, are interactions in the form of question slides. Some of them are, uh, like I said, smart objects. Some of them are text captions that just appear on screen. And you can see that there's a variety of different colors of text, different font sizes. Um, again, you can verify that, uh, that you know, in this case, the official company fault is Trebuchet MS. So you want to make sure that all of these um, uh, tables include just that font. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down quite a ways now. Let me just enlarge this here. So I can see my scroll bar there. Now, like I said, there's about uh, nearly 100 slides in this particular power, or sorry, this particular um, Adobe Captivate file. So when I get down to the quiz, right? So I get actually past the quiz and into my quiz results page. 
the very next thing is is the quiz pool 1-1 and you'll see 1-2 and so on and this is all the text from the random quiz that I've set up at the end of this course once you get past the quiz pools there's one other area that's obviously very important to this course and that's going to be all of the closed captioning information because of course that will need to oh I should also mention that anything on your background slides um, they'll show up as theme 1 dash 1 theme 1 dash 3 and so on once you're past all of that then you'll see the closed captioning information and obviously that would need to be translated as well at the beginning of the closed captioning section there is an updated closed caption data column title again it's important that if someone is editing this document that they leave that alone Adobe Captivate when it's importing this file back into Captivate is going to want to make sure it's that, that that's the same it's looking for that as an indicator that from this point forward the information you're seeing in this column is the closed captioning stuff so again you could be using this to translate to another language you could be sharing this file with uh, you know your stakeholders or subject matter experts for their review purposes uh, perhaps your company uses someone who uh, edits all the company documents for grammar and spelling and punctuation they might have um, a requirement that you run this material through them so that's pretty much it that's the the document once you've made whatever changes that you've made then of course you can save this file and then from Adobe Captivate use the file drop down menu once again but this time instead of export we're going to select import and we're going to choose project captions and closed captions same as before and again this is a fairly lengthy process because it is replacing all of the text not just the changes that you've made but literally all of that text gets re-imported into your file and uh, and updates your entire course I do recommend that you review the course once again once you've done this to make sure that uh, that the text has come in um, as intended you're not thrown off with any strange margins or any strange uh, alignment issues um, but that's pretty much the process it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy guys if you like the videos that I'm producing I recommend that you subscribe to my channel and if you like this video in particular don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up